When it comes to me, it's awkward. I'll tell you why. Because what most people in this world want is a yes or no answer. And it they just want to be told I can or I can't. But Sikhi is not telling you the answer, it's saying use your brain. Now human beings have been given a brain, right? So therefore Maharaj is giving us say, look, it's not it's not black and white, it's a grey thing. You need to use your brain. So Sikhi is a thinking person's religion, right? Now what does it say about me would be better. What does it say about it? Okay? It does not recommend eating meat. Yeah? It recommends you don't eat meat. Okay? Because most of the time people eat meat for taste. Like, I'm not doubting you what you are, but you're not really I'm not sure if you are like involved in fighting on the battlefield. Right? Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Okay. No, it's good, it's alright, just make it honest. So you don't really need the protein from animals. Now do you eat um, vegi- uh, like organic only food? No. Okay. What are the principles? So remember I said it gives guidance. The first principle of Sikhi is compassion. Tol taram daya kaput. From compassion, daya, you then get its child, tol taram daya kaput. Put means child. So the child of compassion, what ch- compassion gives birth to? This is what we use in English, isn't it? Compassion gives birth to justice. Or taram. And Sikhi is all about taram. Yeah? Taram yud. Righteous battle. So we are actually fighting for this thing, which is justice. Animals are uh, beings with souls as well. So exploiting an animal is creating what? Not living in line with this is creating what? It's creating karma. Bad karma. So everything we do creates karma. Karam. Yeah? Good or bad. And what do we say right at the end of Japji Sahib? Karmi apo apani ke nere ke dur. It is your own actions which determine how close you are from God or how far you are from God. So Sikhi is about walking towards God. That's the first part. If Sikhi is about walking towards God, and the first thing we need is, is Dharam. So Mara says, Sant ka marg taram ki paudi ko vadpa ghi pai Sant ka marg, the road of the saints. Yeah? To go walk on the road of the saints, which is the road to the one, the first step is Dharam, righteousness. So you need this to get to yeah. Compassion leads to justice. Justice is the first step to get to the one, the path of the saints. Tigana? So I'm trying to draw it out. Take Barney and put it on paper and draw it out. Santaka Marg Taram ki Pori Kovad. You're lucky to walk this path, but to get this, you're lucky to have compassion. So actually, if you are a nice person, you're lucky. If you care, if you have compassion inside your heart, you're lucky. If you're not compassionate, if you see that animal and you don't care that it's being tortured, you don't care, and you haven't got compassion, then you are unlucky because you haven't been given this gift of compassion. Then you can't be just. You can never bring justice into this world if you don't have compassion first. Yeah? So Mara says, build compassion. So go to Gurdwara and do Langadi Seva. Serve people until you become a compassionate person. Until your soul opens up. Now, Karma is the problem, isn't it? We're creating karma. Now, today's modern food system is, is a book about it called Farmageddon. The true cost of cheap meat. Okay? You can buy it or you can read the synopsis online. The cows that don't see grass. Cows that can't walk. Cows that are supposed to live 15 years, but live only for about 4 years. This is the true cost of milk and meat today. Okay? Eggs. All the male chickens get killed, like they're only a baby born chicks. Tweet, tweet, tweet. Shredded. Because there's no need for male chicks in this system. Yeah? Um, chickens. They're supposed to grow over that much amount of time, and it takes about two years or three years to get a full grown chicken. That's too much. So what do we do? 
We don't feed them normal food, we feed them soya. We pump them full of chemicals to grow faster. So this poor chicken's body grows so fast that the bones haven't become strong enough to accommodate the chicken, so it can hardly walk. I'm not telling you stuff that's not real, this is what's happening. The food that you buy, it comes packaged. No. The meat you buy comes packaged. You don't see that chicken. If I invited you to someone's house and gave you a chicken and I said, here's a machete, go ahead and kill it. Most of the people that do eat meat couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. But if I gave it to them in a sandwich, wrapped up in some bread and some lettuce, they would eat it. Yeah? But is that the principle of truth? Is that sat? Because Maharaj says that the five qualities we need to have are sat, santok, daya, taram, and kima, forgiveness, or piyar, some people say as well. Sat means truth. So the qualities we've been given is compassion, justice, truth, sat, and santok, contentment. So we don't tell no one the truth nowadays, do we? We don't tell them where the meat came from. Why do they make them so far away and, and you can't even get in there? If you're a reporter, you want to go see the things, you have to do secret filming. If it's normal food, if it's good for us, why can't they show us how it's made? Why do they hide it? It's not compassionate, that's why. Yeah? It's cruel. It's not compassionate, it's cruel. As simple as that. Yeah? And it's not actually good for us either. Because you're eating something which is born out of exploitation, not compassion, <coughs> exploitation. You know when Guru Nanak Dev Ji picked up that roti and they squeezed the blood out of it? Why has the roti got blood inside it? <laughs> Meat has blood inside it. Why do they squeeze the roti and get blood out of that? Because it's exploitation. I'm, not, I'm just telling you the truth. The food we eat nowadays is based upon exploitation. It is not based upon compassion. Yeah? And we don't try to face that truth. We don't like that truth. Yeah? I'll give you a prime example. Okay? Baljeet Singh was doing Katha at Gurdara. And it was a and then they, they asked him. He was asked to do Katha at a wedding. And he said, Are you sure? When he was doing his talk, he ended up talking about the fact that these guys now are gonna go to a party and go clubbing and they're gonna put food, meat and stuff down on top of the prashad they're just for having. And he goes, you've had prashad now, don't pollute your stomach with gand. Don't add gand on top of the prashad. Don't sit there drinking alcohol and putting this gand meat on top. And they didn't want to hear it. And they were sitting there in the party afterwards, looking, looking <laughs> with sad faces on there. Oh man, <laughs> having that chicken. And then thinking about it. And thinking about it. We don't like to hear the truth nowadays. People don't like to hear the truth nowadays. They'll even tell the people at the front saying, you can't talk about these things in this Gurdwara. We don't want to hear the truth. It's not compassionate. And it, therefore, it goes against Sikhi. Right? So, that's why I asked you the question about organic meat. Yeah? If it's not organic, I wouldn't touch it with the barge pole. Especially this stuff that you see in like, some shops which you doesn't, look, you don't, doesn't look like meat. It looks like, you know, water stuffed into things. Slices of ham. It's not slices of ham. Proven it, yeah? The <laughs> sausages are not sausages. Yeah? They're made out of pickings from the floor, offal. They were selling uh, chicken meat for ages that had gone off. And they were uh, microwaving it and making it healthy again. And then putting it in a washing machine with white uh, paint, or not white paint, but some kind of white bleach to dye it white to make it look like it was healthy and fresh. Yeah, it ain't nice. And these are sentient beings. These are beings that are going through the same life cycle that we are. And more importantly, from a social point of view, what we're doing is we're feeding these animals with high quality product. Cows are supposed to eat grass. We don't feed them grass. We feed them soya because we want them to grow quicker. Cows aren't meant to eat soya. They've got two stomachs to chew the cud. They don't get to chew the cud now. What's the problem? People are starving. But we don't feed the people the soya, we feed it to cows instead. Do you know a cow, if you look at like the kg, like one kg of meat from a cow, do you know how much water and food has gone to make that one kg of water, of, of, of beef? A hell of a lot. It's very inefficient. You could take that same water and give it to people. 
You get that same crops, food, and give it to people. Yeah? So, and people would, so, but there wouldn't be a water shortage. And if you look at most people, climate change, Bill Clinton, all these people, what they say, the biggest thing we can do is to cut down meat consumption. Because it's unsustainable. It's unsustainable. The amount of methane gas, the amount of food that we feed animals should be fed to human beings, because human beings are starving. The only reason we feed pigs and chickens is because we want to eat them instead of the food. The fish also, fish is fed to other fish. Do you realize that? Yeah, they take fish out of the oceans and they feed them to captive fish stock to make them grow bigger so we can eat those fish. That's very inefficient. So on the basis of efficiency and feeding people, on the basis of compassion, I would say it's wrong to eat meat in today's society. Unless you know it's come from an ethical farm, it's been raised with a nice life, allowed to go outside, live a normal life as he, and then it's killed. Then the question comes up, should I eat it or not? Ethically, it has to be ethical. The question is, should I eat it or not? Most of the time, we eat it because of the taste. The true person who eats meat is that person who is going to be a warrior in the battlefield and doesn't actually want to eat meat, but eats it because they need to grow strong because nothing else is available to give them that amount of strength, what they need. That's the kind of person the Nihang Singhs are. They should be. Yeah? Nihang Singhs didn't really want to eat meat. Right? But they had to, because at that time they didn't have anything else. So, only in certain circumstances would we say eating meat is permissible. If it's ethical, and it's compassionate, it's killed compassionately, so halal meat is out. No halal meat is allowed whatsoever. Yeah? So it's not halal, it's compassionate, it's killed with compassion, okay? one blow. And then um, finally, like a lot of the meat you see nowadays is meant to be stunned before it's killed. A lot of the time it isn't. It's proven that they've, they've had cows from McDonald's factories that were skinned alive. The cow was supposed to be uh, shot dead, but the bolt gun wasn't working. So it just was on the conveyor belt, and they just skinned it alive, hanging up, hang it upside down, it's still alive, and they got chopped into pieces. Or gene DC. <laughs> yeah? So these industrial methods do not work. Cat food is not industrial. Food is something very natural to us. And what I love is the fact that in, in Italy, the Gurdwara has got its own buffaloes. Yeah? They feed the buffalo, it spends the whole day, and then they get the milk from the buffalo, and that's the milk that's used in langar and for making chai and all that kind of stuff. I think that's awesome. Every Gurdwara should have a little farm. Yeah? Why not? All these people walk around saying, I'm going to go to So go and talk about the khetti mari, come Let's get some majja over here. Why don't, why don't we get our own farms and all that kind of stuff? Grow our own food. That's what we should be doing, definitely, 100%. The point was, yeah, is that it's not compassionate, it's not about justice, it's not about truth, and most of the time, we're eating it because of our, t- our taste. We like the taste of it. So we haven't got contentment. Pukhya pukna utri, jabanna puri Today I was in Kingston giving out food in it, and there was a guy there, he goes, bro, I can't eat this, I just need meat. I can't live without meat. Is that person content in his life? No. He just needs meat. If you're one of those people that's, that's in that situation, realize you're facing, you have, a, you have an addiction. Yeah? You have an addiction to this situation. You don't need to be. So break your addiction. And go without it for a little while. Yeah? You feel lighter as well. It should only be eaten as a, as a last resort. Okay? And only if you're a warrior. On that, on that path of righteousness. Yeah? Nobody else needs to eat it. I don't criticize the Hang Sings for eating meat. Because at the end of the day, they're supposed to be doing their job. I don't want to judge them what they do nowadays, but the point is, they're the only people in our history that ate meat. Ahmadah didn't. Ahmadah is happy with his roti and dal. And it, that's quite good for you as well. And it's not that like the Jats of Punjab were quite weak living on roti and dal. They were quite big and strong as well. Right?